Welcome to Human Factors in the Built Environment. This is Chapter 3 on Ergonomics. Here are the objectives. Of course, you want to understand what the term ergonomics means and why it's important to apply it. And what's it? Interior designers' responsibility. And there are economic influences that using proper ergonomics can affect. Ergonomics is the study of the interaction between people and the things that they use to perform a specific task. There are ergonomicists that can study or advise how someone should set up their work environment or what kind of chair a person needs. So the simplest way to look at ergonomics was to look at the beginning of chairs. In historical times, the taller you were sitting on the chair, the more important you may have been. And uh, sometimes other cultures would have very low sitting chairs. Over time, it has evolved that 17, 18, and 19 inches is a good height for chairs. But there's more factors to chairs, such as the pitch. As we can see in the Wassily chair, which is the chair at the top right, uh, the pitch is very dramatic. Even though it has arms, um, it's still uh, very hard to get out of and uh, virtually meet, need to use the arms to get out of the chair because of the severe pitch. But it's a very comfortable chair. On the lower right, we have a contemporary task chair or ergonomic chair that has many adjustable characteristics. There is a relationship, of course, between anthropometrics and ergonomics because depending on the size of the people using the furniture leads to the, the proper size furniture. So we have the children on the lower right. Of course, we have different age groups, some very small furniture, as, as small as 12-inch uh, seat height, and then, of course, up to 18 or 21 inches uh, for larger adults. There are many dangerous situations in, um, in factories sometimes that can lead to um, accidents or repetitive activities that hurt our wrists. Even today, with all the computers, repetitive injuries uh, can affect us, our health. So, of course, fatality is the smallest amount of things that are happening now because we have so many great safety rules in place. But at the bottom, we have errors and unsafe acts that lead to accidents, and that's the majority of uh, claims on workman's compensation. We lose productivity uh, when people are out for back injuries. And back injuries can come from improper lifting. Um, it can come from improper sitting as well. Every joint that we have in our body, if we use it in an improper manner over a long period of time, indeed cause an injury. Here's some improper sitting illustrations. Uh, slumped over, we do this often, especially depending on the chair that we are sitting in. Um, we can see that an S-curve is what's desired for a proper sitting arrangement to help with our, especially our neck and our shoulder areas. Occupational therapists are very helpful in looking at the workplace environment and sometimes the home environment as well. And they can identify areas that, uh, where you might be prone to accidents, such as a slippery floor, a tripping hazards, such as rugs, Alzheimer's, or what they call cognitive disabilities, which means forgetting or not understanding the space anymore. Occupational therapists can help with uh, designing a space even. We have a range on the bottom left is the 5th percentile and on the right is the 95th percentile and in the center in the middle is the average if you would. It's seating high privacy and uh, we want to be uh, working behind a partition. Well it's not just the level of our eyes, it's what it can cover our head uh, because we do have the ability to move our head up and down. So 54 inches is a good seated high privacy for a partition. Now, in the female, of course, it's a little smaller. We would see in the male, 48 is average. In the female, it's 44. So there's as much as a 9-inch difference between the 5th and the 95th percentiles and between men and women. Accommodate a variety of people in the workplace. This is another example of the seated high privacy illustration the panel C is uh, the 54 inch which goes slightly above our head and that's our minimum uh, seated high privacy. 
but today partitions are getting lower and we're using more collaborative workspace. Sometimes we're interested in standing up at our workspace, and in any case we want to maintain the ergonomic position of holding our wrists either in a parallel position to the floor or slightly pointing down. Here are some ranges that um, are useful. For instance, the, a range of 36 to 42 is a good counter height when someone's transacting at a reception desk. Seating elbow height 23 to 26. And then our seat height is generally 16 to 20. And that will accommodate just about all the percentiles. Again, people looking at the stand-up workstations, these convenient workstations in the for hall. people in a medical setting could use these as they're coming out of a patient room or move it into the patient room. Here's a classic seated example of an ergonomic diagram. The idea of the spine um, at a 90 degree angle to the legs, which is at a 90 degree angle to the lower legs. And here are some of the many examples that you can see on the internet to illustrate some of these ergonomic positions and some of the crazy lengths that people have gone through to better the idea of ergonomic seating including these wonderful little accessories. So if designers are not willing to use ergonomic furniture or specify ergonomic furniture, incorporate such things as adjustable armrests, then people don't feel compelled to go out and accessorize their space. But wrist rests are a handy object to have and I do encourage all of you to consider using them. Here are some of the ergonomic features you would look for in a chair. Synchro tilt, that means that the chair is going to move with you as you move forward. What angle is the back? What's comfortable? Sometimes we want to sit back further when we're, say, on the phone or thinking. And sometimes we need to have it move forward, such as this, which is a great ergonomic position for working at the computer for long periods of time. The key ingredient, though, is adjustable seat height so that your knees are slightly lower than your hips. Steelcase has undertaken a global posture study because, of course, people are using different kind of devices today, such as tablets. So there's the draw posture where people bring their elbows in close to their body, and it can cause arm and shoulder fatigue over time and have neck strain. Uh, these are the positions that um, people are getting into to work with their cell phone, their iPad, Again, their cell phone in a straightforward position with their arms out, which can be fatiguing, or a slumped position such as this when working on a laptop. So they've invented this chair that has a lot of flexibility. You can see that the arms are supported here, so he doesn't have to hold his muscles in tension. Um, he's supported here as well in his shoulder region, which adds a lot of comfort. And here's a posture study that they did. And we can look just at one population of, say, the millennials. And this shows that of all the people that are surveyed in all these different age groups here, that the millennials tend to do this position, the strunch position, quite a lot. And that females seem to do this even more than males. So switching gears a little bit to collaborative or um, other kinds of workspaces, here's a good collaborative workspace, even though the seating looks a little bit uncomfortable. But it does have a way that they can collaborate together and Incorporating tables into workspaces is also important. We, not, we cannot do all of our tasks simply sitting in a chair. So here's a collaborative idea. And then here's another idea that you can use for a pod that helps accommodate the miscellaneous things we need around. And here's the strunch position, um, but in a leaned back uh, kind of lounge manner. We're also incorporating other kinds of spaces, such as social spaces. This is uh, an area, a uh, writing surface that can be used with an individual lounge chair and some side tables. These are somewhat focused spaces. Two or three people can go in there with a monitor and share ideas together or even have some writing board space. Here's another idea for shared monitor space, a little bit more flexibility in the seating, a little bit more lightweight seating. Ergonomics plays a big part in the home. We can see here just for reach ranges, 
uh, with an average height man uh, or slightly smaller um, that they're barely able to reach above the microwave and we can't expect a child to be able to get anything out of the microwave when it is above the stove so there's been a lot of interest in putting microwaves in drawers or just below the counter and uh, that would help someone also in a wheelchair this is a really good illustration that shows you all the different activities that can go on in a kitchen, including stooping down and reaching into the oven and the oven door opening, the other cabinets opening, the, the oven opening, the wall oven, the circulation clearance. If somebody's going to walk behind us when we're um, working at the stove, we really want to know what does that look like. But then when you take a kitchen all together, you also have the dynamics of someone working here and then needing to turn around to do something else. So, so it doesn't, the answer isn't always to make this distance bigger. But you want to look at the workspace, who's working in it, and how many people are intended to be in there at any given time, and the configuration. So here's some great examples of how cabinet design can affect visibility and comfort. Classic uh, problem area is to make think that making the upper cabinets deeper gives you, of course, more storage. But you can't see under the cabinet because it is. Um, you might hit your head on it if it's set too low. Uh, this is in centimeters here, but usually we're using 18 inches here. And I've made it higher as well, depending on what kind of equipment needs to go under here. Again, we if it's too low, the cabinet's too low, that's going to hurt us. But we could make the, cab, the bottom cabinet deeper, and that helps us out a lot. We can also continue to make it deeper and put a back sur surface here that spreads us out even farther. And in this creative idea, we have continuous shelving the whole way. We're able to see into all of that. So by using science to analyze the measurements that people need, we can come up with better and creative ideas. Some great tips here. Um, we want to always remember that people have toes that protrude out to the front of the body, and we need to allow for toe space, which is generally three and a half inches or four inches, and three inches deep can be a little deeper. Um, or sometimes we're incorporating op open bases. Here again is uh, something that's analyzing reach ranges and also visibility. What is the ideal height here? What is the ideal depth here? What can we do with the space behind there? In this case, they're looking to put pipes and um, other mechanical uh, systems back there. So cabinet layout does affect efficiency, and um, there are there is an ideal formula that all three legs of the triangle should add up to less than 26 feet. So in this illustration, that's a little less than six feet on each side, um, 18 feet. And of course, depending on the size of the kitchen, what we're able to do with it, but we don't want this to beyond, get beyond that because it will take several more steps to get between each workstation. There's a great video that's a link on the module uh, for this chapter. Please go look at it. Um, it helps you analyze what you might uh, use in ergonomics to help you make a more ideal kitchen. So thank you for listening.